Hey YouTube, it's Penny. So I've been stalling on bringing you um, a vision that I had on August 30th um, because uh, I'm still missing a piece of it and I have been thinking that I should wait until the Father shows me the final piece but it also occurs to me that he may not show me the final piece um, and that maybe it's to remain a mystery. So let me explain. Um, that night I had a vision of four timelines. So there were two on this side, two on this side, and I knew there were timelines. And the, the first one, so in my upper left hand corner, was labeled um, the third day and it showed a division of time into three sections with 2012 below the marker dividing the second and the third day like this. Okay, so the, the second one below it, so in the lower left, was labeled the midst of the week and it showed a division of time into two sections with 2012 below the marker in the middle of the timeline, like this. The thing that was interesting about, um, well, all of these timelines is that 2012 was the only date that was shown. So, you know, a lot of times people might think, oh, the midst of the week, you know, means seven years. I can't testify to that because I wasn't shown any other date besides 2012. So, um, and then the the third timeline, so I, I, I looked here and then here and then my eye went up here, and this one was called um, Seven Years, and there, the 2012 was on the marker, um, there were seven markers and it was um, the marker between the second and the third year. Similar to the one next to it, but, um, but different, it looked like this. Um, and then, as I started to look down to the fourth one, I, I woke up before I could see it, so I don't even know what it was called. But because 2012 was shown to me on the other three timelines, and making an assumption that it was also about 2012, um, but the father hasn't shown me, and uh, it's been almost a month since I first saw this vision. The thing that was interesting about the vision is during the vision, the whole time, and then after I awoke, I could hear clocks ticking um, as well as clocks chiming and gonging like you know like if you had a cuckoo clock and it was you know would make that sound it was loud <laughs> um, and I could still hear it after I woke up and of course it reminded me of um, the words that I heard back on July 27th or excuse me July 7th when I heard tick tock tick tock so here I'm hearing all these clocks and chimes and uh, obviously having to do with time um, and then he showed me these four timelines. I really wish that I had gotten to see that fourth one. So um, there are many scriptures that go with this, and I'm going to go ahead and let David provide those for you. Okay, so I recorded that a while ago, and it has been my intention to um, let David bring you the scriptures, but because of circumstances and our personal lives, um, he's not been able to record a video. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring you the scriptures that he and I discussed um, that we believe are um, the confirmations for what I was shown in this vision. Um, for those of you who have been praying for his <clears throat> mother, she is still in the hospital battling an infection and uh, has another surgery in front of her, so um, we do appreciate your prayers. Okay, so um, the scripture for the third day uh, that we were led to, uh, and the third day is actually mentioned in scripture over 70 times, so it, there's a whole Bible study um, that I have yet to do about the third day, so if any of you are led to do that and come up with any other 
other understanding um, about the third day, please um, post it. So Hosea 6, 1 through 3, Come and let us return unto Yahuwah, for he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know Yahuwah, his going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain unto the earth. Okay, so as far as the midst of the week, that phrase is only found one time in all of scripture, and it's in Daniel 9, 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So, um, I could add a lot of commentary there, but um, I'm going to refrain. Uh, and then, the seven years, we believe that this is about the two years have passed and five years remain. Um, it's found in Genesis chapter 45, uh, regarding the story of when uh, Yusuf, Joseph, was sold into slavery in Egypt, and he went down um, and uh, during the famine, and the father instructed him, you know, told him there were seven years of plenty and seven years of famine and that he was to prepare. Um, so starting at verse six, it says, for these two years has the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be plowing nor harvest. Um, and I'm gonna skip down to where he says, haste ye and go up to my father and say unto him, thus says your son, Yusuf, Elohim has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not. And verse 10 says, and you shall dwell in the land of Goshen. There's been a lot of talk about Goshen recently, um, about the places of refuge that the Father is preparing for his people. Um, it says, and you shall be near unto me, you and your children and your children's children and your flocks and your herds and all that you have. And there will I nourish you for yet there are five years of famine. Hi, this is David, Penny's husband. I have reviewed the information in this video with her and assisted in the interpretation. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, our Lord God, King of the Universe. Amen.